celebrated for their serenity. Most of them are believing and many are devoutly practicing Buddhists. Even the city dwellers are sentimentally attached to the green countryside, its cool mornings and its blazing noondays. They are good humored about most vagaries of weather, economy, and human nature. A conservative people, all considered, respectful of the past and its ways, not given to social turbulence, or for that matter, to dramatic breaks with tradition. So how did it come about that this is the setting for one of the most successful programs of fertility control in the world? How is it that the boatwoman who sells bananas and coconuts along the banks of the canal also sells, and with no more ado, contraceptives? In fact, she is a unit in an extraordinary demonstration of the way in which a strong national program and an innovative private program can work together to produce unusual results. She is a distributor for the community-based family planning services. With her fellow distributors, she is part of a revolutionary vanguard, male and female, old and young, shopkeepers, farmers, school teachers, with little in common save for one vital characteristic. They are respected resident members of the community in which they work. Family planning came to Thailand in a variety of dramatic steps, alternately common-sensible and faintly outlandish, and in a very short length of time. This song is sung by children all over Thailand. It describes the sad plight of too many children who do not have enough to eat, simply because there are too many of them. The song goes on to say that now, happily, mummies and daddies can call on the local distributor for help in preventing such sorrows. The children learn and accept as a principle that they should not have more than two children when they grow up and marry. By the age of six, through a tactful but forthright program of elementary population education, they know what family planning is. They also know what a condom is. It is a large, strong, colored balloon. There are contests to see who can blow the balloon up to the most astonishing size. Oh, 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 oh,
For older groups, such as the young workers in a Bangkok printing plant, there are other introductions to family planning, more sophisticated, but no less lighthearted. Desensitization of the public attitude toward the mechanics of contraception has been a first step for the community-based family planning services, CBFPS, and prerequisite to all other steps. Like the good showman he is, the lecturer disarms his listeners by making them laugh, so that practical information can be imparted painlessly. His point is, the condom is an object. It has no moral or social character of its own. It is not dirty. It is not threatening. It is simply an easy, cheap, safe contraceptive. Whatever else these popular demonstrations accomplish, they guarantee one result. None of these young people will ever look upon a condom in quite the same way again. Quite incidentally, it has a variety of practical uses. You can carry coins in it, or wrap packages with it, or use it to tether a ponytail. Most important, you can learn to accept, recognize, touch, use contraceptives. From the reduction in fertility already accomplished, it is clear that the Thai people are willing to do just that, and in very large numbers. Sometimes in the Sunday market, the surrogate balloons are blown up and floated off in clusters, carrying coupons which entitle the finder to a free sterilization. In the bus stations which serve Bangkok, packets of condoms are distributed as samples. Family planning supermarkets in the station sell not only contraceptives, but also t-shirts, scarves, and other novelties bearing the program's slogans and symbols. Most of these articles are produced by CBFPS itself in a small silk screen facility which operates at a tidy profit. Such activities have a double value. They help to make the idea of family planning more usual and ordinary. And they can be built into a pattern of self-sufficiency, which should be the ultimate goal of all such programs. More and more elements are beginning to pay their own way. The painted message in the work buffalo reads, I use Michai, which in Thailand now means, I use a condom. It happens that Michai is the given name of a young Thai economist, Michai Wirawadya, who directs the CBFPS program. An early opponent sought to demean Michai and his program by proposing that henceforth condoms be called Michais. Somewhat unexpectedly, the result has been that they now are called Michais, cheerfully, all over Thailand. <laughs> For all the apparent frivolity which characterizes the public face of the program, it has a serious side. At the outset, and periodically since, house-to-house -house surveys were made to determine village fertility rates, to identify high-risk women, and to determine the prevalence of contraceptive use. The village program is the most important CBFPS endeavor, and the village distributor is its keystone. The hairdresser is especially appropriate, for she is in an easy, confidential relationship with most village women of childbearing age. Like other distributors, she is known to be trustworthy, financially responsible, energetic, interested in village concerns. She makes a small profit from the contraceptives she sells. In turn, she offers her customers a discount on hairdressing services when they become acceptors. It is one of many examples of mutuality of support. As a concept, it has roots in simpler times in Thai rural life and in good Buddhist doctrine. 
Cognizant of the fact that poor women in urban areas are no less needful of contraceptive help, the program put supplies and services in the hands of those distributors on whom urban women depend for so many necessities. Once contraceptives have become acceptable and ordinary, they must, of course, be universally available. And in Thailand, they very nearly are. A good resupply backup system is part of the program. The area supervisor, who has 60 to 70 distributors under her jurisdiction, visits them regularly to replenish their supplies, to hear their problems, if any, and to keep them apprised of developments in other program areas. Currently, all contraceptive supplies are obtained by CBFPS from the national government program. Both the public and private sectors have dedicated considerable effort and financial support to this principle. Once motivated, a family planning acceptor should be able to obtain contraceptive supplies easily, inexpensively, and regularly. In the commercial sector, of course, condoms have been available for many years. The thrust of the current program has had the real effect of taking them out of the closet, so to speak, and assuring that customers can find them not only easily, but without embarrassment. Some 241 Bangkok taxi drivers are active members of the CBFPS program. They sell about 200 cycles of pills and 15 gross of condoms monthly to their passengers. They refer an average of 10 clients for sterilization, both men and women, to the clinic each month. If a driver brings in 50 sterilization clients in a year, CBFPS pays his cab insurance for a year. Voluntary sterilization looms very large on the local family planning horizon for a wide range of reasons. Among couples practicing family planning, more than 25 percent have chosen sterilization. In establishments such as factories and businesses where as many as 20 candidates have requested vasectomy, they will send a fully equipped mobile operating van and a surgical team to perform vasectomies in an informal, comfortable, and practical setting. Proof of how relatively simple an affair a vasectomy can be. Voluntary sterilization has been part of the entire national program in Thailand from its early days. Medical standards are at the highest level for both male and female sterilizations. And in fact, pioneering work and new techniques has carried the Thai experience all over the world. In locations where they have found only a handful of men requesting vasectomies, they send out the vasectomy tour bus and bring the men to Bangkok for operations at the CBFPS clinic. They visit such sites as the Emerald Buddha Temple, a precious experience to rural men who might expect to live out their lives without seeing Buddhism's holiest places. Bringing family planning services to more than 15 million people of Thailand has meant that every conceivable proper outlet for contraceptives must be used. Traditional midwives, such as Auntie So, are a familiar part of many programs. They are in some ways the ideal distributor, trusted by village women, wholly in their confidence, party to their problems. But of course, Auntie So makes her living delivering their babies. Now that she has fewer and fewer deliveries, CBFPS is helping to augment her income by financing a village shop for her.
One of the most poignant proofs of the depth and breadth of the Thai program can be seen in a little border town where Thailand adjoins the cloistered nation of Burma. The border is loosely controlled, and the young Burmese wives often walk across it or ride their bicycles to the Thai distributor's house. Contraceptives are still banned in their homeland, but many young women make the journey regularly to obtain pills for themselves and their friends. It is special evidence of how far women will go to take control over their reproductive destiny, even when the men who lead their country have made it at best grossly inconvenient and at worst illegal to do so. After the dazzling campaigns which make family planning something of a media event, the day-to-day -day operations must still fall back upon the infrastructure. The government program and CBFPS alike depend heavily upon the massive efforts of individual field supervisors and their relationship with the distributors in their area. These supervisors are permanent salaried staff members living in their own districts, owning motorcycles to expedite their extensive travel. They meet monthly to turn in their collections of money from contraceptive sales, collect new supplies, brush up on program developments. Their activities are closely synchronized with the government's health and family planning network. Their distributors are instructed to refer to government clinics any of their clients who need special help. Once a year, all distributors are brought together in their district headquarters for retraining beyond the initial training with which they started their work. The training aims at providing the best possible simple grounding in family planning principles. They are reminded of their role as cooperating functionaries with their government counterparts, and they are given such specialized training as will enhance their position in their communities. The ultimate aim is to make of these distributors a kind of primary health care corps, able to handle simple health problems particularly in remote village areas. There is strong current emphasis on parasite control. CBFPS is cooperating with the government health services in attacking this persistent enemy of rural health. Because the training experience within CBFPS has been so dynamic, there was considerable pressure to share the knowledge gained with other countries battling similar problems in the population field. The Asian Training Center for Population and Community Development in Bangkok has attracted enthusiastic participants from a dozen countries, anxious to learn special techniques of communication and marketing. Each country will need a different approach to its fertility problems. Fertility is inextricably bound up with social and cultural patterns. But certain human qualities are universal, and the CBFPS creation of a climate of acceptance for family planning calls upon basic elements in that universality. Michai Wirawadja, the cheerful young iconoclast who directs the CBFPS, looks beyond family planning. Kun Kanjit has been working in family planning as a distributor in this village for five years. 68% of the couples in this village are practicing family planning. They want other things in life, and together we've learned that many things can be done using family planning as a base. Raising the income of the people, creating employment, opportunities for women, renewable energies, together with the villagers. This village health and economic development center is one example of what we're trying to do in trying to combine fertility management and development. We've got examples right here of mushrooms, pig raising, chicken raising, fertilizer, the solar, food dryer, pesticides, household drugs, all the things the villagers need to have a better life. And this we hope to be able to do together over the next five years in our second phase. Family planning has succeeded. Other things in life must begin. Fertility control at the village level is a simple, practical, visible starting point for development. 
On that basis, and with approved asset of the family planning infrastructure, the program is now going into a variety of development activities. Some distributors offer free pig breeding services, and there is a contract pig raising arrangement available in several villages. A sign on the home of the school teacher distributor says, Father Pig available here for stud service, free to family planning acceptors. Compliments of Nietzsche. The quality of innovation which marks so much of this program has carried over into development efforts. Biogas is one of the exciting possibilities. From farmyard waste, the villagers create methane gas, which can be stored in an old truck inner tube and used to power small cook stoves and lanterns, an infinitely renewable source of valuable energy. All of the endeavors are small, but the technology is entirely appropriate to the location. Natural links between family planning, self-help, and rural development are visible everywhere. Contraceptive distributors who have services to offer, be they rice millers or hairdressers, continue to give discounts on those services to their acceptor clients. It all began with family planning. And it began and continues without assault upon any of the values Thai society really holds dear. When a new development center opens, or a new supply of contraceptives arrives, a venerable monk from the nearest monastery asks the blessings of heaven upon them. Toward these men and their ceremonies, the Thais are honestly reverent. The fun and games surrounding the family planning program are simply admissions that most Thais are also richly humorous. Such traditions as the stylized martial dance with which a boxing match begins are not to be trifled with. This is preparatory and formal and sacrosanct. But because a boxing match is a place where men gather and reassert their appreciation of the manly virtues, it is also a suitable place to hand out condoms and to present boxes of condoms to the contending fighters. It is small testimony to the fact that the Thai is not only a reverent man and a humorous man, but also a practical man with a keen eye toward the future of this tranquil land. It goes with the territory.